under our third caution of the day, and Mark Martin is in for what would appear to be an unscheduled pit stop. Jerry, what's going on? They're looking at the right side of the car. The crew said Mark had come, commented about a possible oil leak, so they are going to come around and put some fluid in the back of the car. They have a they are working on the right side of the car, and Mark is sitting as they are looking at the left front. And now Mark has shut the car off sitting here on pit road. We might mention Dale Earnhardt has been on pit road. I talked to Richard Childress a minute ago. Apparently Earnhardt has bent the suspension in the right front of the car. The control arm, the ball joint is bent. They're going to try to get it fixed. They have him back on the racetrack, but the car will not be drivable to the extent that he was early in the race. The car should be competitive, but not nearly as good as it was earlier. Meanwhile, we're back here in the Valvoline pits watching Mark Martin and the crew as they are working on that machine. So two of the contenders having problems here in the last couple of laps. Earnhardt, the crash on the track. And now this is Mark Martin and Bill Elliott bumping as they come off of corner number 11. There's one hit and there's two hits. But that shouldn't have hurt anything on the front end, at least, Bob, uh, because he was hitting with his left rear quarter pound. Mark Martin still waiting to go back out onto the racetrack. They're going to make another tire change. Back with more live coverage after this. Getting set for a restart here at ESPN Speed World coverage of the Sears Point International Raceway Save Mart Supermarket 300. Down to Jerry for a quick report before green. Guys, Mark Martin just radioed in a minute ago said, I need oil. They said, what? He said, you need oil. So he came down pit road. They put two gallons of Valvoline in the car. Mark said he doesn't know why, but he lost oil pressure. The pressure gauge was fluctuating. They put oil in it, and now it's back up to where it should be as we get set to return to green flag racing. Jeff Bodine takes the green flag. We're back under racing. Ken Schrader is second, then Ernie Irvin, Bill Elliott, and Ricky Rudd, and it's by far Bill Elliott's best performance of 1993. And Rusty Wallace is off the pace. I believe Rusty Wallace is off the pace. Here he comes. Both those cars pass him on the start. Seems to be going pretty good right now. Maybe don't know if they missed a gear or what happened, though. I don't know. Here comes that Scripman trying to move on the inside of him. So, yeah, he might be having a problem. Something is wrong with Rusty because on the acceleration off turn 11, he did not. And John Kernan, what's the problem? During that mishap, Rusty jammed the transmission in, and it is now broken. It is basically all he has is high gear. So Rusty Wallace not able to shift, stuck in high gear. And as you know, that makes it very difficult to go around the race course. And now three of the top contenders have problems here in the late going. Earnhardt, Martin, and Wallace. All this could help Davey Allison in the points. He came into this event 162 behind the leader, Rusty Wallace. And both Dale Jarrett and Kyle Petty are also having good days, so we could see a tightening of the top five in points. A lot of traffic there behind Rusty Wallace and Hunt Strickland. Here is the lead group. That's Bodine and Ken Schrader headed toward turn number 11 again with Ernie Irvin right there also. Now that Derek Cope car that's formed is not on the lead lap. He's a lap down. That caution flag was a huge, huge look and Schrader trying to get by Jeff Bodine. But this last caution flag, not the last one, was one before this, a huge advantage for Jeff Bodine. Because on the pit stop, he had lost five or six seconds to Dale Earnhardt Rusty Wallace. The caution flag brought him back up. And when Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace had their problems, left him out front. Ken Schrader has never won on a road course. Boy, he's looking racy right now, Bob. He sure is. He does have one top five and six top tens. His best finish was here at Sears Point. He finished fifth, but now is in a position to battle Jeff Bodine for the lead as Ernie Irvin now closes in on Schrader and makes it a three-car race up front. Martin is dead, we understand. The car has quit. Boy, a tough break for the Valvoline Ford. It has come to a halt. He's on the drag strip, off the race course. This won't cause a caution, but it will mean the end of the day for Mark Martin. And here's Schrader trying to go on the inside of Bodine through turn seven. Ooh, he gets a fender on there to rub a little bit, but he had to back off. And that gave Ernie Irvin a little momentum as he came up there. And Move right in on the back bumper of Schrader. We've got a race. Look at everybody else come through. Most of those cars on the lead lap. Dale Jarrett got the left front of the car way up in the air as he went over a rumble strip. And 
Here they're coming down through turn 10. There's 10. They're making a right under and hit towards me. And we see Kyle Petty in the mellow yellow Pontiac. And Kyle and Dale Jarrett fanning out trying to get by Dale Earn. Davy Allison, meanwhile, Jeff Bodine con continues to lead as they come off 11. He staves off the challenge for the moment. In fact, puts about another car length between himself and Ken Schrader. And Schrader has Ernie Irvin all over him. And Dale Jarrett was able to get by Davy Allison down in turn 11. Now Blake had gone in the corner and took the spot away. Ricky Rudd is fourth. Bill Williams fifth and Terry Labonte. Dale Jarrett. Jarrett's got something uh, loose on the back of the car, Ned. Yes, he has. I don't know if it's a piece of the plastic off of the bumper or what it is, Bob. But it is hanging back there. That's what it looks like. I don't know if it is or not. It might be <laughs> off of somebody else's car. It looks like it could. Because well, it looks like all the green paint is still there as far as he is concerned. Hmm. That's, a, that's a panel that goes under the rear of the car. Off his car. Someone's hit, hit him in the back. And, and, and she has Dale Earnhardt's off the course. Uh... I don't know where this is. It's up in turn three or four, I guess. Yes, there he's going down the hill towards turn five. Boy, Earnhardt just has to be tremendously disappointed. Look at this, though. Ernie Irvin going to the outside of Schrader. And Jerry, tell us about Mark Martin. Bob, when it rains and pours, they have lost the rear gear in the valve and board. Mark Martin currently six in the points is through for the day. This is his fourth finish. Tenth or worse in his last four consecutive races. All right, we got a great battle up front. Jeff Bodine leading at the moment, but Ernie Irvin, Ken Schrader, and Ricky Rudd are right there challenging for the position. ESPN Speed World coverage of NASCAR Winston Cup Racing today at Sears Point International Raceway, and things are really heating up. We have Jeff Bodine, Ernie Irvin, Ricky Rudd, and Ken Schrader right there together on the racetrack, and not too far behind are Bill Elliott, Terry Labonte, Dale Jarrett, and Davey Allison and Kyle Petty. Jeff Bodine slipped a little bit down in turn 11 that time. I thought Ernie might try to get under him. He did not do it, and Jeff Bodine still maintains that three-car link advantage. They're beginning to pull away a little bit against Schrader now. I've noticed all day on new tires, Schrader could really run with the best of them, but after he heated it up a little bit, his car starts slipping, and that's what's happening right there. You saw him slip out a little bit on that turn, and uh, he just sort of fades away after that. Jeff Bodine, the leader of this race, has fallen from second to seventh in the points over the last six races. So he wants to move back up and is leading here this afternoon. By the way, Bob, what that was? Whoa! Big crash. Wally Dallenbach and Brett Bodine are involved. Two other cars are also. Can't see the number on them. Looks like John Krebs. And the yellow is out. Overall caution coming up. Now, are they going to pit when they come back and get the caution flag? That's the question now. Oh, I guess the first question is, who's going to win the race back with the caution flag? Whoa, Brett Bodine has got a visibility problem, among others. Well, he certainly does. Man, oh, just follow that yellow line, Brett. Brett. <laughs> that yellow line, just keep following. Look out the window there. That's what he's doing, I think. Follow the yellow okay, brick here, road. Here are the leaders racing back to the line. They're starting to tell them where they are. Ricky Rudd getting hungry here. He'd like to get around Ernie Irvin. He's going to try it. Nope. Looked inside, goes outside, Benny. He tried it. Ernie came down the block that move, so Ricky thought he would fake him and go on the outside, but Ernie was not uh, going to play that game, and it looks like Ernie's going to win the race back to the line for second place. There it is. Yep, Ernie has second. Ricky third. Fourth caution of the afternoon. Here's a replay on what happened up there. Well, Brent Bodine, the back end, gets loose on the Quaker State board, and Wally Dollenbach is right there behind him. He gets stopped, but Brett keeps spinning in front of him, and he hits him, and then the car number 20 <laughs> spins around. Here's John Krebs. He just comes in there and stops. He didn't have anywhere to go in the Diamond Ridge car. Yeah, that's Dirk Stevens at number 20, and there is what the Quaker State Ford looks like as a result of that incident up there in turn two. Back in a moment. <laughs> 